Good morning, folks. Top solar event of the day again occurs at the limb. The visual splendor will completely miss our planet. The battle for natural continues in Oregon this week. You see the GMO companies plant their seeds and care not for where the wind blows their spawn except for when they contaminate an organic farm, then they sue that farm for using their seeds, like the wind and rain are the farmer's fault. Oregonians' ballots to rid their area of GMOs are to be counted Tuesday. And in my humble opinion, a bit of review for veterans of our blog, I've got a couple good reasons to consider the Roundup resistance as the most harmful modification humans have ever made to food. We're now at the alert map where fears of an alien attack in China were just the latest failed Russian rocket launch coming back to Earth. Maybe we don't want them taking us to space. Also, top weather disaster of the last few days has occurred in Pakistan. Floods have swept homes away and already taken lives. We're hopping over to the USGS Water Watch where I use data products to create a 45 day run of flood and stream flows based on the diametrically opposed conditions across the US. Southwest drought is one of the worst ever, with fire danger, while record smashing rainfall comes in record short amounts of time. Speaking of records, the extreme temperature swings are peaking in cold right now, relative to the time of year. We're going to use the data from the biggest global warming pushers on Earth to show how cold has slipped in to dominate this cycle. We like to compare the last full year with the year to date, 2014 so far. We're going to see the same thing as we go down the full daily, monthly, and all-time U.S. records and then do the same for the entire planet. Over the last 365 days, we witnessed the climate extreme shift from hot to cold. Heat still staying in the mix there, but 2014 so far, the cold has taken over, and in no way is it even close. Not on short time scales, monthly time frames, nor the all-time records. Cold has dominated thus far this year, but remember, the El Nino conditions are predicted to change that by the end of the year, when the climate extreme swings should have heat back in the spotlight. We'll show global weather at the end. But the top watches right now are for the two storms still at Europe, one in the North Atlantic and then the flood maker that has been hitting the Eastern Bloc. Meanwhile, severe thunderstorm watches return to the US tonight, but interestingly, they're based mostly on high pressure creating convergences rather than the Western low. Where they collide, we have our chances for bad weather. The eruption we saw to start the video was indeed the top pop on our star and is responsible for the minor jump back up and flaring dismal though it may be. Sunspots are not going to help that situation today as the top has decayed and no magnetic mixing from yesterday remains in the south. The solar wind tried to make it interesting with some density blips this morning, but our shield is reacting like you swatted a fly. Our planetary shield is calm. Coronal fields are blocking the positive coronal holes up north, while the red negatives down south are directly Earth-facing. We continue taking our earthquake uptick, but luckily, it was more about the non-standard locations than major magnitude. Antarctica with a couple shakes, and the most notable was a rare four-pointer that struck Germany. Lastly, folks, I hope to hop on for a live Google Plus in a few hours to go over a ton of updates to the Mobile Observatory project, the website, the climate fight, and the state of the sun, and more. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.